Senate version of the National Defense Authorization Act includes authorization for projects related to nuclear testing. The House version of the bill would block funding for nuclear tests. Eric Gomez is Director of Defense Policy Studies at the Cato Institute. Eric, welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. What are the major differences here uh, between House and Senate versions? Is it as simple as House says no, Senate says yes, or is there more to it than that? Yeah, it's, it's pretty much as simple as that. Uh, Senator Tom Cotton introduced an amendment in the Senate version of the 21 NDAA to have this um, $20 million in funding be available from the Stockpile Responsiveness Program uh, for nuclear testing should the decision be made by the administration to restart it. It barely came out of committee, 14 votes yes, 13 against. And then the House uh, Hask said no. And also the House Appropriations Committee also said that they would not allow funding for it. So that is the, the big dividing line. Senate wants it, House doesn't. What is the history here, Eric? When was the last time these tests were conducted in the United States? Where are they conducted, if at all, now? What's, kind of what's led us up to this point? The primary testing site is out in Nevada, and the last test was conducted there in September of 1992. It was called Divider, a 20 kiloton nuclear test. And it was the last one before the U.S. signed the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. Um, that treaty has not been ratified, so it has not entered into force, but the U.S. adheres to pretty much all of its provisions uh, and doesn't, we haven't had a nuclear test since 1992. The United States has also conducted the most nuclear tests of any country. We have over 1,000. The Russians conducted about 730, and the Chinese, by comparison, only conducted about 47 tests. Uh, in their entire nuclear program. So the United States has tested the most. Most of those tests were done underground in Nevada at the test site, and the last one was in 1992. If this uh, money makes it into the final bill that the president signs, what comes of that? Who does what with that money? So that would be uh, Department of Energy, uh, NNSA, the National Nuclear Security Administration. They would use the funds to make preparations at the Nevada test site to restart a test. Um, we haven't done one in a long time, so this might require digging a new uh, underground shaft to test the weapon within, installing equipment inside it to measure the effects of the blast and to installing equipment around the area to measure the effects of the weapon, and then actually selecting one out of the stockpile to test. The um, Someone in the Defense Department has said that the test could happen on relatively short notice within a matter of months. However, I think there's a lot of doubt among the expert community of if they were to do that so quickly, would they have the proper instrumentation in place in order to get an accurate measurement? Or at that point, would the test done on a quick turnaround be mostly for a political signal to the international community and not have much to do with actually verifying the effectiveness of a weapon. What is What are the people who are in favor of this, Senator Cotton and others, saying is the reason to do this vis-a-vis -vis the national defense strategy? The department has been very, uh, very clear about everything that it wants to do relating somehow to the NDS. Do we have a sense of what the connection is with this test to the overall strategy of the NDS? The best reason to test a nuclear weapon is that it's the most accurate way to tell how it functions if you were to use it in a conflict scenario. And the United States and many other countries that have no longer done explosive testing for about 30 years now since the 90s, they have abilities to test weapons without having them actually explode. Uh, computer simulations, uh, the laser ignition facility out in uh, out west can can do that for us and the but these are sort of cited as not being as effective as just testing outright and just detonating a warhead out of the arsenal um, i think there's a lot of concern on the on the protesting side that as the united states starts to do some more nuclear modernization as new warhead variants are added into the arsenal and as Los Alamos and other facilities start to revamp plutonium pits or plutonium pit construction, that there might not be enough information on how effective these things are or how reliable they are. So that's the most common pro argument for it. You mentioned um, that as far as the scorecard on this, Hask is opposed, 
PACD is opposed, SASC in favor. Do we know yet where uh, SACD is on this? I don't believe so. I, don't, I haven't seen uh, their statements on it yet. But it's clear that it's a pretty, it was still pretty contentious even in SASC. It only came out of the committee by a vote. And in an NDAA process in 2020, in 2020 for the 2021 bill, that's been remarkably easy uh, by all standards compared to last year where there was a drawn out fight and the Democrats in the House were pushing hard on certain things and they ultimately didn't get them. I think this is a rare instance this year of a major point of disagreement between the two chambers of Congress. And I expect the Democrats to fight this one hard. Um, will that result in them getting what they want? It's hard to say. But I think the very, very narrow margin in the Senate Armed Services Committee for passing that amendment shows that it's probably not going to get to the final version of the bill. Um, but we haven't heard, I haven't heard what the Senate Appropriations Committee wants to do with this. Eric Gomez, great insight. Thanks very much. Thanks.